Okay, customizing metadata is a lot easier once you know how to do it, and then you can use the metadata override to override the standards that you put in when you created the project um, at first. So this is my Blue is a Mood collection that I did with Ali Illustrated. And it's a portrait collection, so we'll pick a safe for work image. And we can take a look at the metadata. And it looks a lot more thorough, a lot more with more depth than what we had in the previous section. If we copy this to clipboard, we can go over to our metadata tester and put that in here. And it's going to show up exactly what our NFT looks like. Because at this point, our image is already loaded to IPFS. So this can pull the image off of IPFS at any time. It doesn't have to be minted in order to see that. Uh, while that loads, because it seems to be taking a moment, let's talk about how to write this kind of data. <clears throat> so JSON is always uh, the title in quotes or the attribute in quotes, and then the description of that attribute, again, in quotes, followed by a comma. And you need this comma, and then you go to a new line, and you repeat it again, all right? Then you go to the new line, and you repeat it again. So what's important up here is, remember when we did the part where, when we were duplicating the NFT, and it had a number? zero zero whatever through zero zero whatever uh, this has to be left as the asset data point so let me pull up an example see this right here it says asset name this is going to pull if you have it in brackets like this it's going to pull from the data of the nft maker pro and not the custom data you're putting in so for your asset name and the name of the NFT, you can use the asset name and then in brackets and then the name if you want the display name to be numbered and different. If you don't want, if you want to have your own custom display name, this one, I don't know why it's taking so long to load, but if you want to use this one, then you would simply have the data, whatever you want listed. So my collection is blue as a mood, and then there's 20 of them, so I just have it in Roman numerals one through five. But the actual individual NFT title is right here. Okay, so next, we know how to write lines of data. Now, you can write as many as you want, but the lines can only be 64, excuse me, 64 characters long. And that is difficult when you wanna write a whole description. So in order to write a whole description while keeping it under one attribute title, you write the attribute quotes on both sides, colon, space, and then you use an open bracket. Then you hit enter. No comma, you hit enter. And after that, you would write whatever you want to write. So blue is a mood. This is my description. All of these lines are 64 characters or less. Comma, again, and then comma, again. At the end, of what you want to write. There is no comma. There's just an end bracket and then a comma. Okay, this is important, but don't stress about it too much. So for my metadata, I have image name, uh, the longer description, what kind of camera, the model, the artist, my website, Ali's website, my Discord, Ali's Discord, the rarity of the um, asset, and then the regular data that goes along with putting in the NFT. Um, let me refresh this. There it is. And that's what it looks like. So when I did the duplicate step, where it had a display name, okay, let's not mess this up, where the token prefix is this asset name, okay? And then display name is this. Now, I didn't want my display names to be numbered the way they were down here, so my data is written with an override where basically it just doesn't pull from the NFT maker project. Um, okay, I'm gonna cancel this because this project is live. 
go back to metadata test, and this is what it looks like. And remember, description, Alex's, Alexandra's website, my website, artist, blah, blah, blah. These are all written so that the description is first, so it's capital, and then everything else is less important. So I had that, I let it do its own thing, but I just wanted to make sure the description was first. So that was a capital D. So it shows up even before the C and the A's. I'm already losing my voice. Now, if you do all this, you write all this, like I do it in my clipboard, um, you can copy it all and put it into a JSON validator. Uh, so I'm using jsonlint.com. You simply hit click validate JSON, and if there's a problem, it'll give you a problem. For instance, if I forget a comma, then I hit JSON validator, it'll show me where there's a problem, and it'll tell me what the problem is, although this looks like gibberish. It says parse error on line 19. Uh, it shows the end of line 19 and the beginning of line 20. There should be a comma here. It says expecting a end of field, comma. Okay, that looks confusing, but once you get used to it, you get used to it. Um, so if you're not in a, a Cardano person and you're like, why would I do this? It's so much easier to do it on OpenSea or what have you. This gives you more control. And you can do a lot of fun stuff with the metadata when you have all of this control. So once you have it in here, you just copy it back, go back to your NFT, uh, replace it in the new metadata override, which is uh, edit NFT, metadata override. This is where it's all at. And then it'll override all of the placeholder data that I had originally put in here. And that's it. That's how you do your own sort of advanced metadata. If you have any questions about this, if you are interested in um, learning more about anything NFT Maker or Cardano NFTs, you can reach out to me. I'm Real Jason Matias on Instagram and Twitter, and uh, all of my links are below.